Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials, video 119. It's on specular or mirror-like reflection. And so this lake, since it's perfectly still, is acting like a mirror. It's reflecting the forest behind it. And so if we look at that in more detail, if we shine a laser light on a mirror, it's going to come in at an angle, it's going to bounce off that surface, and it's going to be reflected. We call that specular reflection because it's all going in the same direction. And there's a rule that the angle of incidence, in other words, if we draw a line right down here that represents zero, we call that the normal, then the angle between here and here, or angle of incidence, equals the angle of reflection. And as we change the angle of incidence, we're gonna get a changing angle of uh, reflection. And so why does the forest look like it's underneath the water? Well, let's use this arrow as an example. And so if we put the normal in like this, when you see the bottom of the arrow in the water, you can see that the angle of incidence, the angle of the light coming from the arrow bouncing off the water is going to be equal to the angle at which it bounces back to your eye. And as we move the normal across, as we move to an area higher and higher on the arrow itself, then we're going to get an angle of incidence that's greater, and so is the angle of reflection. And so what you create is a virtual image. It's inverted, it's going to appear as though it's underneath the water, but it's simply specular reflection of the light itself. And so as light moves from one medium to another, one of three things can happen. Happen. It can be reflected or bounced, it can be absorbed, or it can be transmitted. And when we're talking about specular reflection, we're just talking about the light that's actually reflected. And so the key point is that if you ever have a mirror and we have light coming in, we can represent that as a light ray. And that angle of incidence, in other words, the angle between the normal and the light ray, is going to equal the angle of reflection. Now this is specular reflection. In other words, it's perfect mirror-like reflection. Reflection. And you can imagine that's not always going to happen. If we look at the actual surface it's bouncing off, if it's not perfectly straight, then we're going to get what's called diffuse reflection. And so we're going to have that light not just bounce off in one ray, but it's going to bounce out in a lot of different directions. And so if you look at how light bounces off a mirror, that's specular reflection. But if you had some other surface, maybe like a piece of paper, it doesn't bounce back exactly the same way it came in. And so you're going to get this diffuse light on the surface. And so if we model this with a PHET simulation, we've now got a laser light bouncing off the surface. You can see as I angle the laser light, as I move it from a really low angle to a really high angle, we're going to have a corresponding change in the angle of reflection. And if we actually put a protractor on and start to measure that, you can see that the, the measurement on the left side between zero and that angle is going to match exactly the angle on the right side. In other words, the angle of incidence, this angle right here, is going to equal the angle of reflection. If we look at this reflection of this mountain here, so the light on the top is going to have specular reflection off of the surface, and it's going to bounce to our eye. And so we're going to get a perfect mirror-like bounce. And that's why the image in the water is going to be exactly the same as the image that we see it just with our naked eye. But let's say that we change the surface of the water. Let's add some irregularities to that. How would we do that? We could add some waves to it. And so if we add some waves to the water itself, then as the light ray comes down, it does doesn't bounce exactly back to our eye, but we're going to get diffuse reflection. And so what would that look like? Just look into the water for a second. If we add some waves to it, it's going to give us an image that's not mirror-like or it's not perfectly reflected back to our eye. And that's just because we have irregularities in the surface itself. What if it was snow? Then we're going to get total diffuse reflection. We don't see Im any image in the snow itself. And so did you learn to make predictions about the object and the image position? due to reflection. Remember the angle of incidence always equals the angle of reflection and I hope that was helpful.